Hi everyone and welcome. Uh, we're going to work a little bit on an exercise here that I think you're going to have a lot of fun with. And the exercise is seeing the abstract shapes. And we've talked a little bit about this. And this is a good exercise that gets you using that right brain. And uh, to begin with, I'd like you to start with the oval shape. And you're going to find that in your resource folder for week three. And your goal is to create a uh, tree shape. And out of this positive shape, you are going to paint into the shape to create a negative shape. So uh, as I work on this, I think you'll get the idea. This is going to force you to work um, only from the right brain, which is uh, something that we just, you know, we have to struggle with, but it's something that's very good for us because a lot of times we want to see uh, symmetry in things. And oftentimes in painting, uh, you know, you don't see that. So it's a real good exercise to get you uh, or to force you to start seeing things a little bit differently. Um, this is an exercise that will get you to look at negative space. Um, and remember that your lines should be melodic and each side should be dramatically different. And I'll show you a couple of ways of just uh, anal uh, doing an analysis on that as we go further. So you can start at any point. And for this one, I actually started down at the bottom of the oval. And I'm just simply using the eraser tool, which is located up on the uh, toolbox. And I'm using that to go in and start creating my shapes. Um, your line should be, again, be melodic. And each side should be dramatically different. So you want to watch for that. And you will find that your instincts are to repeat the shapes, but you know, try and not to do that. Refrain from doing that. Be aware and take time to evaluate your work and check for equal shapes. Remember to concentrate on the negative space. Uh, when you're finished with this, I'd also like you to flip the image horizontally and evaluate again to make sure that your, sh uh, that your shapes are working. And check each side, again, for uh, different uh, shapes. You don't want to see any cloning. So again, I started out uh, kind of at the bottom here, and I'm working around the image. And I'm starting to carve into it to create uh, some shape. And again, my idea is to create a tree shape, but I have to be careful because your, you know, your in your real instincts are to, you know, to continue to duplicate what you see here. So you have to try and work yourself out of that and not do that. And as I'm going, I'm kind of refining the edges a little bit. And maybe I'll start over here and go into the shape a little bit further. So this is where I have to watch that I don't clone. And here again, I'm starting to clone that shape. So you have to really pay attention. And when I'm talking about cloning shapes, I'm not talking about the positive area you see here. I'm talking about going into the negative here. So you also want to try and keep the shape somewhat melodic as you're going through here too. Get a little bit bigger brush so I can fix these edges up a little bit faster. And I kind of like what's going on up at the top here, so I'll do something like that. Now once I have the shape in, I'm going to go up to the Edit menu and I'm going to flip it horizontally because what I want to be sure here is that the image works either way I flip it. And it does, you know, it's got, you know, a nice uh, harmony about it. It's not, uh, you know, at this point I, I kind of, when I do flip it, I end up going into it a little bit more and refining the edges a little bit further. And you can certainly do that. And I actually, I kind of like it flipped this way even even better. But notice, even in this, the trunk of the tree, 
I'm not repeating any shapes here. Everything is, uh, and I'm getting a little close on this side again, but it's enough of a difference where it's not going to be uh, remarkably uh, repetitive. And that's the thing that you have to watch for. If you start doing this and then this and then do that same shape down here that's what we call repetitive and that's a repetitive negative shape that you see there and when you start doing that in your uh, actual uh, painting it can get very problematic so try and pay attention to that now I'm going to take a look at my layout grid here and I've got a, a custom grid um, called comp, uh, compare and what it does is it it's going to split it right down the center and compare those two um, compare the two sides so at this point I can look at it now and I can see if I definitely have differences going on between the right side and the left side and I think there's enough difference that it it makes it, it makes for a good tree so um, I'm going to be happy with that and a lot of times uh, when I'm doing these I I just enjoy um, and let me disable that and go I'm just gonna pick up the grainy uh, water brush and bring the resaturation setting up to about 73 percent and I'm gonna pick up this color and maybe just have fun doing a few more branches <laughs> Like I said, it's kind of a fun little technique, fun little exercise to do. I find myself getting really kind of focused in on it. And uh, we'll take the oil brush blender and just kind of blend out the bottom here. And I think we've got a pretty good little tree. Looks real great. So um, try this. And you've got two, um, two different uh, trees that you can work with. There are two different shapes that you can work with. One is the triangular and one is the oval and I'd like to try, I'd like to have you try both of them because I think uh, they'll be real, um, you know, really effective for you. And you see the more I'm looking at this now I'm starting to, to think that, that that shape there is just too much like this one. And you're you're gonna see this. I mean, this is the thing about this. You'll you'll start working, and you'll just go, "Whoa, I see some cloning going on there with shapes." So, when you see that, try and uh, break it up a little bit, even to the point where you know maybe you add like a, a sky hole here, just for more interest in the shape. And then at that point, you can definitely. Uh, maybe add another, you know, branch coming up through that sky hole. It's a little bit too too strong, I think, on that one. But anyway, but this is this is the, a real fun exercise, and just you know, go for it and and experiment with it and see see uh, how you like it. You know, I think you'll have fun with it. Um, Secondly, remember that uh, as we work on trees, uh, you know, part of the uh, emphasis that we're going to be putting in this week is to learning to uh, create those strong shapes, but also being able to, to uh, demonstrate distance and atmospheric perspective uh, in our work, too. And so remember all the things we've talked about so far about overlapping and distance and softening colors and softening edges, having a contrast between light and dark, what happens to uh, objects as they recede into the distance, what color do they become. Um, you know, some of these things are all going to come into play at some point uh, when you're uh, doing a landscape painting. So there's a lot to think about, I know, a uh, lot to think about, but you know, I think the more that you, um, the more that you experiment, the more that you work uh, with, you know, I'm, I'm already seeing a shape that I didn't like here, so I'm going to have to fix it. <laughs> I'm getting pretty bad. But uh, 
I think it's good because once you once you start getting an eye for things, you know, uh, you know the, those shapes are going to come at you a little stronger when you start seeing shapes that are kind of taking over and being uh, too strong in the composition. So anyway, when it happens, it happens. But when things are in the uh, this is this is a good example of when things are in the focus or in the in the front foreground area everything else around it your peripheral vision notice that we can really calm things down but sh still show that this tree is the closest thing to us um, the eye just wants to move to where it sees the detail and everything else around it is kind of muted so it's it's a real interesting way that the eye has of looking at things and uh, you know we automatically our mind automatically tells us because these trees in the background are not as detailed because the edges are softer it gives us that feeling that those trees are further back in the distance than this tree is in the foreground area here because much of this tree is lighter it the edges are much sharper and we've got a lot more detail uh, in the tree so this is one of the ways in your painting process remember that even things in the in the focus in the foreground area don't necessarily have to be strong and detailed to show and bring attention to what that focal area is. So this is a, a real skill that we're going to be working on uh, further with our landscape paintings. Um, I also, I'm going to put together a few examples of this so I think uh, it'll give you a better, better idea of how to uh, perceive this type of art and how to work this way or this technique. Um, so simply stated, uh, everything in the background again is is slightly muted, slightly uh, blended out. Edges are not uh, really sharp. Uh, edges are softer, and then we have this overlapping, which gives us that uh, feeling that this tree is definitely closer to us. And even though this foreground area down here is slightly muted and faded, it still feels closer to us but it also pushes us into emphasizing the tree here in the foreground and it does uh, that beautifully as it just kind of mutes everything around it and lets us focus on the main uh, subject matter here so try this exercise I think you'll have a lot of fun with it it's a uh, um, you know there's a couple of shapes in there for you to work with and please feel free to post. Um, it's not necessary that you post, but I, if you feel like you uh, are having problems with it, you don't quite understand it, or you've got some real good ones that you'd just like to share, please do that because I'd love to see them. Okay, have fun with this.